Hello everyone! This time we will be talking about the double border and the three magic steps that you need to take to have any double border without a sweat. We are not going to use neither slip stitches neither post stitches. Everything is really pretty easy. As you most probably already know, we use double border also, it's called envelope border, to hide the tails of our over overlay mosaic crochet. You can use this method to any overlay mosaic crochet pattern worked in rows, no matter the design or size. And you know I have to admit that I have been avoiding working on a double border. Mm, yes, it's my confession time. But after I found this method, now I absolutely love it. And I want to add a double border all the time. <laughs> it's funny, really. Uh, it took me really some time to, of experimenting, but here we are. We have such a great result. It is really so easy, neat and fast, and I believe you will love it as well. Uh, sorry, I'm not showing the entire pattern. It's not released yet. Soon. <laughs> Hiding. <laughs> Okay, so let's go step by step and look through what we will be talking about in this video. The first magic step, how to start our project. Step number two, how to work the first and the last stitches on each row. Then, before we start our border, I will answer to such a popular question. Do I need a smaller size hook for our double border? I know, I know. You are looking forward for this. Don't scroll the video. No, 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 no. Are you still with me? Okay. Okay, and the most intriguing part, the third magic step, how to work the first round of our double border. And the last step, how to work the last round of double border. Before we all get over excited I have to bring some bad news really sorry about that most probably you will not be able to use this method for a completed project really really sorry about that but there are always many more mosaic crochet patterns to try right okay so let's move to the first magic step how to start your project so there are several ways how you can start your project and I will show you some. I will be using uh, the key weight yarn 4 millimeters hook. As you know, you can work your music project in any weight yarn and appropriate crochet size hook. So the first way, if you do not mind working into bumps or foundation chain, you might like this method. So we start with foundation chain. And you work it uh, as long as needed for your project, whatever pattern says. Then the first row, which is common to be all single crochet, we will be working into the bumps of your foundation chain. If you turn it, you see those tiny bumps. I'm not really very friendly with this method, but there are people who like it. So you turn, here is the front side, you went to the back and you work into those bumps. As for me, it's really not easy and I really don't even want to struggle here to show you. But there are people who like it. You see? Such a struggle for me. Anyway, I hope you get the idea. So... In the first row of this uh, single crochet, 
will be the first row of your pattern and what this gives to us we are working into the bumps and this front and back look this foundation chain it leaves us nice space for our double border so front look we will be using for front side of the border and the back look we would be using for our back side of the border so this is uh, one way as i said it's not my favorite but you might like it the second option is to start your project with chainless foundation single crochet if you are not familiar with this um, it takes some time to practice but it's a great way to start your project and in this case chainless foundation single crochet counts as uh, first uh, row of your project because we work together and chains and foundation chain and a row of single crochet it's not something really difficult and they have I think separate a video tutorial and there are many how to we how to work with chainless foundation single crochet I just will work a few stitches and let me show you so here it is um, the top of our first row that we will be working into back loops only and here the bottom so you see we have here also two looks which is perfect for our method uh, front look we will be using for front side border and back loop we will be using to start our back side border and and as I said so far my most uh, favorite way is foundation cord it's also called eye cord it's really easy way you need or two strands or to make one tail really really longer depends on your project actually we make a slip knot it's really easy but if it is something new it needs some practice so what we do we wrap yarn around your hook and chain one you wrap yarn around your hook and chain one you can also wrap hook around yarn if it is easier for you just try and find your favorite way so after you make this foundation cord at the end uh, when you have it as long as you need you have two options one you can you can cut your yarn and tie the tails or you can chain one and continue your project so i will show you the way what how it looks if we cut the yarn we cut the yarn we fasten off and here the mother tail we tie those together two three times as many you feel like you are secure and then what do we have here this nice we will use for the border so actually i'm turning it upside down I'll start from here and this V I will use for the border as I said again one look will be for front side one look will be for the back side and for the first row I will be working on the opposite side of this 
I cork. You see how many loops it has? It's just perfect. So you find nice loop. This V I will leave for border. And starting with the first stitch here and standing single crochet, I start working our first row. Really very easy. And I really like this method the most. You see this is nice V we will be using for the border. So try uh, those ways and choose your favorite one. And let's move to our second magic step. How to work the first and the last stitch on each row. Here I have a small uh, sample of uh, overly mosaic crochet and this is how the first and the last stitches look from the front side. This is our first stitch, this is our last stitch and this is how they look from the wrong side. And those stitches are the perfect base for, uh, to start our double border. Let me show you. I go a bit ahead and I will show you where we will be working double border. So from front side we will be inserting hook into these both loops. And we will be working here our double border. And for the wrong side, <coughs> sorry, for the wrong side, we will be inserting again our hook into this both loops. It's really uh, this method that I will show you right away. Create such a perfect uh, way, uh, such a perfect base for us. As usual. We start with standing single crochet, so slip knot. And the first stitch. So to create those nice V and this to push here on the side, what we have to do? You have to insert your hook in between the post legs. So this post legs form this V and we have to insert our hook here in between. So this is from front side and from the back side your hook has to come out right after those two legs. So this, uh, those two legs we are pushing a little bit aside here to the edge and here we will be working our first round of our double border. And you work here first single crochet which is standing single crochet and then whatever your pattern says you continue according the instructions and if you noticed th those V also look really very nice and very neat even if you leave the fringe it creates such a nice edge or add some finished touch so it's a win-win situation. You can use this method even if you haven't decided in the beginning of the project whether you are going to use uh, a double border or no. So whichever, whatever you decide, at the end you will have such a nice edges. So let me show you how do we work the last stitch on each row.
with my sample of small, so it's everything is rather quick. So here we reach on the end of the row. And for the last stitch on each row, again, we insert a hook in between the post legs, so here in the center of this V, and from behind, from the wrong side, we want to grab those two legs and to push them to the side. So our hook here is, we have two legs here, pushed on the side and from front side we have right in the center. Do not make those stitches too tight or very loose. If it's very loose, it will not look nice. And if it is very tight, it might look here like it's not tall enough. Uh, because those stitches, uh, those stitches go a bit lower, if you understand. They do not go into the top of the stitch. They go a bit lower. If you make it very tight, they will be a bit lower. Of course, it's only one stitch and after we make a double body, it will not be noticeable. But if those stitches are also very tight, it will be very difficult for you to make a, the first round of our double body. So at the end of the each row, we cut the yarn. We fasten off, and that's it. We are ready to move on. Uh, to move on. So uh, uh, this way of working of the first and the last stitches will form as the nice base for the first round of the border on each side of your project. So that was the second magic step. And we are ready to move on and to show you how easy it is to start a double border after we completed those two magic steps. Let's move on and see how do we work the first row of our double border. So, before we move on, let me answer such a common question. Do I need a smaller size hook for the border? The short answer, no. You do not need a smaller size hook for your overlay mosaic crochet border. I know, I know, I know. She said, he said. No, no, no. Listen. Let's uh, try to give you more professional answer. So, most probably you do not need a smaller size hook because back loop single crochet stitches are taller than single crochet stitches. And usually the same number of stitches and rows give you a rectangle where height is larger than width. Are you following me? Let me frog here the last row because this is extra one and it will not give you the right numbers. Here for this sample, sorry for this one, I don't understand. For this sample, I have 25 uh, rows and 25 stitches. Let me measure for you. So this is our height. And this is our width. Can you see? It's one centimeter taller. And when we are working border, we are working in the round so it means that this part those stitches we are working like this yes will go here 
So it is already shorter. Why would you need to reduce the hook size? Why? You do not need it. These stitches play the role by themselves and you do not need to do anything extra. So I hope I convinced you. If not, what can I say? It means I'm not very good in this. And uh, okay, okay. Let's move to the set magic step finally. The first round of our double border, uh, that moment when you appreciate those small extra steps that we took when working on our project. When using this technique, you may choose from whichever corner you want to start, and whether it is wrong side or uh, right side, and this is totally up to you and there is absolutely no difference. My personal preference is to start from the wrong side for the only reason when I finish the back side I cut the yarn, I fasten off and I start working the border from the front side and then when you have the name number of rounds from both sides you work the last round through the stitches of both sides. Let me show you how we actually actually work the first round of the border. So before we start working our double border you need to secure all the ends. It means to tie them together for usually I tie them twice but if the yarn is very slippery like anti-peeling acrylic or bamboo yarn I tie it them even three times I know maybe it's too much but it's better safe than sorry and we do this from the both sides we tie them and we trim a bit those are a bit too long just Trim it a bit, a bit, all the tails, nice relaxing. And let's start from our wrong side. So, I, for the mosaic crochet in rounds, I like to start each round in the corner. So the first stitch for the first round, I work here in the front loop of our last stitch here it is the top the top of our project the last stitch on this side and to the front loop only we will work one standing single crochet we leave front loop not wet, we will be using it for front side border. Chain 1, this is our corner space, push those tails aside so they are not on the way. And here starting with the very first row, we will be working single crochet, inserting hook into both legs of our stitch. You remember that these are the ones that we pushed aside and look how nicely they serve for our first row. If you work them a bit tight, let me make it nice. If you worked it a bit tight, it might be a bit difficult, but you know, slowly, slowly, we are not in a rush. Anyway, this method is much faster than all others I have tried. And like this, we go uh, up to the end of this side of our project, 
uh, the corner we chain one and let me let me meet you there i will pause the video again you see let me show you so this is our back side and this is our front side from front when we will be working the border from the front side we will be working into those to be here this those two legs of the stitches and the tails will be inside between those two borders let me reach the corner and i will meet you there so at the end of the side of our project here i have the stitch of my first uh, row of my project that i started with foundation cord and i was using turning chain one so this is the only one stitch that might be a bit tricky to find where to work your last stitch before corner but it is doable Nice. And for the corner, again chain one. And here I have the bottom of my project. We will be working into front loop starting from the very first of our project. Don't confuse it with the turning chain one. This is our first stitch. And we will be working here into front loop only one single crochet all across till we reach uh, the end just be sure that you do not grab the back loop the back loop we will be using for our front side border and when you reach here at the corner again chain one and here starting from the very first bump again into each bump here the stitches that we pushed aside you remember when we were working side stitches we will be working here one single crochet all along all, all around so and at the end of the round Mm. Let me pause the video and I will show you how do we close each round. So uh, I am at the end of the first round of my double border. And if you remember here we started the round working into the very first stitch before the corner. So we finish our row round just before. At the end of the round, I like to use invisible join, invisible slip stitch method. You take your hook from the stitch, you insert into the top of the stitch, and under both V, you grab your yarn, and you pull the loop through the top of the stitch. You tighten it up make it all nice and you if you are working border in one solid color you might want to place a stitch mark into this stitch because at the end we will be working here into back loop only the last stitch on th this next round so you do not miss it if you are working in one solid color it might be not so easy to notice the stitch. So for my method, how do I work mosaic crochet in the rounds? To start a new round, if you are changing colors here, you would change the colors with a slip stitch and then chain one. I'm using the same color, so chain one and into corner chain one, I work one single crochet, chain one, one single crochet so that's all the magic of our first round from the wrong side and you continue here uh, for the border i prefer to work uh, back loop single crochet 
for the back side for the wrong side border if you if I am using here mosaic crochet so the I'm sure that the, the stitches are the same height and I don't like to use double bo uh, double crochet stitch just to be sure that those tails will not start poking out through the gaps single crochet for sure it is more tight so I prefer from both sides to use the same stitches here back loop single crochet here back loop single crochet okay so let me pause the video a little bit and I will show you how do we work the first round of the border from the front side so the first round of our double border from front side will be actually all the same what we did from wrong side when you are starting the border from this side again there is no matter which corner you started it doesn't even have to be the same corner where you started the border from the wrong side whichever corner you prefer again you work you start your border into the last sorry you start your border with a standing single crochet working into front loop of your very first stitch of this side hits the top of our project the very first stitch one standing single crochet chain one for the corner and we move to the side here those two loops are just screaming our name and ask us to be worked into them you see how easy it is this method is really so easy i love i absolutely love it really i know maybe i'm all excited because i created this idea and i find it uh, found this method by myself but i really honestly hope that you will like it as well uh, so easy it is really and i will show you okay, look it's nice tight from both sides and again here we reach the corner chain one and again starting from the very first stitch we start here working into front loops of each stitch single crochet chain one and again here you see uh, again here the very first stitch so here you have to find this center where we enter it and you see this bump of our turning chain one will be hidden between our double body you will not be able to see it so that's pretty much this let me stop the video and i will show you how do we work the last round of our double border so in order to start our last uh, here it's my another small sample that i made already those borders from both sides so in order to start our last round of the border you need to have the same number of uh, rounds from both sides and from front side and from back side and the last round we will be working going through the stitches of both borders and this way we will be joining them now this border if you you are not uh, using the pattern this border i believe it has to be at least like my border here in this case is like four rounds only you know if you do not want wide border i believe this is even enough but it's absolutely up to you how wide you want it if your pattern doesn't say anything and let me show you how do we actually work the last round it's everything really pretty pretty easy 
So again, the start. We start with chain one, and now instead of going only through the loops of one side, we go through the loops of both sides. For the corners, if you prefer, you go through. You may go through both loops to be sure that they are not stretched. And here you find your corner chain one, and you grab those loops and you work through both sides. One single crochet, chain one, one single crochet. This is our corner. And here I prefer to go only into a back loop, grabbing the loop from wrong side border, so two one loop of each border and one single crochet all around. So this is the easiest, the simplest way to close your double border. So we will hide those tails inside. If you prefer to make something more fancy, you can, you can make twisted single crochet. Oh, sorry, you see? And this is up to, absolutely up to you and uh, or whatever pattern says. That's pretty much all what I wanted to show you for this video. Let me show you again how the border looks of completed project sorry 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 i'm not showing you the pattern yet this pattern is going to be released on 4th of december so you will see it very soon this is how the border looks double border i want to show you how neat it is take a look at here wrong side the front side and this is the final result this is how it looks nothing is stretched nothing is loose i didn't use smaller size hook the same hook as i was using for the entire project that's it for this video and i really hope you enjoy it and you like it and you will be using this method enjoy it have a lovely day bye bye